Hi, this is JB from Not Allowed to Arkham. This time we are continuing the Unexpected Courage series with the Edge of the Earth campaign box and we are playing Norman Withers. And in this series I will build a deck using only two core boxes and the expansion box for the campaign. Edge of the Earth is a bit different because you get all the player cards in that expansion player card box so uh, we have uh, the whole uh, level zero card pool for the expansion or the cycle in one so it uh, what well, it is a bit different than the uh, previous uh, deluxe expansions that have only some of the cards that come in the cycle but we'll see how this goes so I've built a Norman deck I'm using uh, Norman uh, Withers uh, from the expansion box, not the novella version. I still use the novella version uh, character um, card or investigator card because my token is uh, the same image as that. So I uh, prefer this image. So uh, the signature cards are from uh, the uh, expansion box. But let's look at Norman's deck first before we start. Okay, and here is the Norman Withers deck I built in ArkhamDB.com. So let's look at what we have in the deck. So uh, first off, uh, let's go through the assets. So as we have a limited card pool, some <laughs> cards are not the best suited, but uh, preferably I will be upgrading these to better versions or uh, different cards during a campaign if I'm uh, using a limited card pool. So first off we have a knife or two knives and uh, this is just because if we have to fight something we have at least some way of dealing damage. Uh, Norman has a two combat so the boost from a knife uh, sets us at three so we have a fighting chance to hit something. Um, then uh, we have magnifying glass times two. This is just a staple card in the core set for uh, seekers, so you can get uh, better investigative power and you don't have to rely on uh, boosting your investigation checks. Then uh, the new card from this set is the uh, pocket telescope. This lets us investigate uh, a location and use this uh, to look look at the revealed side of connected unrevealed location. This helps us a lot uh, to uh, figure out where we want to find the ba uh, camp where we want to resign at. Because in this scenario we have to resign at the most high shelter location. So this lets us uh, look around where we need to go. Then uh, there is the investigation action, investigate and reveal connecting location as if you were there. So we can just pass through locations and investigate from another location. So a useful card for sure. Then uh, we have some, because Normal will turn into a mystic during a, a campaign when he gets experience. Uh, because Norman's uh, ability is to have the top card of his deck revealed and can play that uh, cheaper. We have scrying. So uh, scrying is not use, uh, useful in most of the situations, but in this case Norman can um, scry his own deck and put a good card on top and bury a weakness if he happens to see one. So uh, we can keep a good card on top of the deck so we can use Norman's ability and there's only one copy because that is uh, not not like useful all the time, but sometimes. Then uh, we have uh, shriveling. This is the main way for Norman to fight. And uh, then heavy first. I I had one tech deck slot left, so I thought heavy first is good one. We can get some uh, health buff, and this also uh, lets us uh, do something with. The tokens if we hit a uh, non uh, out of failed symbol chaos token so we can uh, take one damage to this and cancel that token and 
reveal a new one. Uh, then uh, I decided to focus on the newer allies, so I took Jeremiah Kirby. This is a really powerful ally. Uh, he lets us fish a good card from the deck if we uh, guess correctly, uh, or, or if we choose the odd or even. So, uh, looking at our deck, I, I have a lot of uh, very good odd cards, so we probably want to do that so we can get some odd cards out of the deck. Uh, then, and uh, Jeremiah also boosts our intellect, which is really useful. Uh, then we have Professor William Webb, and uh, he lets us do fun things when investigating, so we can get cards out of our discard, or we can uh, get some better clue, cluing action going on. Uh, then, uh, that, that was the asset, so let's go to the event. So we have two emergency caches. This is just a stable when playing with the limited card pool to get uh, resources when needed. Uh, Mind over matter is a powerful card for Norman because uh, we can trade our height or agility to five uh, with our intellect. So a must have almost uh, the last two cards we can take from the mystics level zeros are two word of protections. These help us deal with the encounter deck and are really good. Uh, then a uh, really like made card for Norman. Uh, written in the stars is a newer card. So it's a fast card, play only during a turn. This got the top card of your deck, so we know what the card is, so um, that is a useful. Then uh, shuffle, uh, shuffle it. Uh, if it's a weakness, shuffle it back into your deck. Otherwise, for the remainder of your turn, while that card is on discard pile committed to each eligible skill test you perform so we really know when we want to use this so it's like made for Norman then uh, those were all the events so we have a usual suite of uh, skill cards so two deductions so if we hit a double resort a double clue location we can just grab both with the deduction then, of course, we have Guts, Overpower, and Unexpected Courage. I want to go with Overpower instead of uh, Perception, because uh, Norman is a good investigator, but we might need to fight sometimes, so Overpower might come in useful in those situations. And, as usual, I have included Unexpected Courage to each of these uh, Unexpected the Perich decks so far, and this is no exception. It's a good card. Two wild icons for a skill test are, is a really good card from uh, a limited card pool. Uh, then uh, we have picked our random weakness, and this time it is a Silver Twilight Acolyte, so not from the new set, but from the core set, and this is a really painful because it's an enemy with three health, so if we hit this, we really need to did it somehow. And that is basically all I want to say about the deck. So we have set up the scenario already. We are playing the first scenario of the campaign, uh, Ice and Death, and I have already figured out who will die in the plane crash, and this time the unlucky uh, uh, partner is Professor William Dyer. So unfortunately William Dyer Hit the bullet when the plane crashed, so that is it. Uh, we can't use him, but uh, because Norman's um, agility is only one, I thought to try out Elijah Ashay back uh, because he lets us evade with the base skill of five. So if and and he has a good so for three and three. So if for example we hit an enemy we can't deal with, uh, we can use Elijah. To evade, evade and run away, basically. And yeah, we'll see how this goes. So uh, we have set up the scenario. We start at the crash site, and uh, we go from there. So that is all I want to say. So let's get started. Uh, in the setup, we also added one. Frost token to the back, so we have one frost token already in the back. Just figuring out where I want to go first. 
So, I think, uh, well, uh, let's not figure out that before we draw our opening hand. So we have shuffled the cards and we draw our opening hand of five cards. We'll see how this goes. So, uh, pretty good starting hand. I think I will only mulligan the knife. And uh, that is basically it, so I'll draw one more. So we get emergency cash, uh, which is going to be useful. We'll shuffle the rest of our deck back. So, um, while I shuffle, I read uh, Norman's ability, so play with the top card of your deck revealed. Once per round, you may play the top card of your deck as if it were in your hand at a minus one resource cost. After a weakness is revealed while on top of your deck, draw it. And Elder Sign effect is X. You may swap the top card of your deck with the card in your hand. X is the resource cost of that card. Of the top, that card on the top of your deck. Okay, so. We have, well, we have Jeremiah Kirby on top of our deck. So I think this will be a setup turn. So, we will definitely play Jeremiah Kirby, and uh, we only pay two, uh, three for Jeremiah, so I'll actually keep this, uh, I'll keep this here, and Jeremiah comes here, so, and we reveal our top card, so I will pick odds, because we know our top card is Shriveling, which we want. So one, two, three, four, five, and let's read. After Jeremiah Kirby and their pay, choose even or odd. Reveal the top five cards of your deck. Draw each card with the cost that matches the chosen option. Shuffle the remaining cards into your deck. So we have the Shriveling, uh, we have a knife, and we have Professor William Webb. So these two get shuffled back into our deck, and these will draw. So immediately we have a lot of cards to play with. So I think Jeremiah is a really good ally when you know your deck composition and can cheat with Norman and pick uh, odd or even depending on what card is on top of your deck. So I think those are shuffled now. So our top card is the Written in the Stars, but we can't play that the cheaper now because we already did that. So, that was our first action. Uh, as a fast action, I will play... Mm, I'll play the magnifying glass down. So we had it, have it in play, and if we hit uh, something that discards our assets, uh, we can discard the cards. Oh yeah, and it, that's a fast, fast card, so we don't have to use an action. Mm. Uh, I think we are playing emergency cash, so we'll grab a few more resources. Last action, we will play pocket telescope down. Oh no, uh, we'll play shriveling. So we have a way to fight if we hit some enemies. So we have four charges of shriveling. So we have a pocket telescope, processor, wheel and web, knife, uh, mind over matter, and unexpected courage. So we are pretty much set up to start investigating. But that is all we can do this uh, round. So we end our turn, we ready up, we draw a card, we get the uh, written in the stars, and the next card is pocket telescope, uh, telescope, and we gain one resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We start our round by adding a do. So the threshold is for first one. And let's quickly look what we need to do. So after a location enter, is entered by an investigator for the first time, put into play each set aside location connected to that location. Use the map on the campaign guide for reference. And then in, uh, search for a campsite. It, if each investigator is at the same location and that location has no clues on it, resign, you set up camp 
each investigator resigns objective find somewhere safe to set up camp. If each undefeated investigator has resigned advance, the higher the shelter value of the location, the resigned at the better. So we want to find a high enough shelter location. Okay, so we get our first recovery card and it is zero visibility. With zero visibility in the plane, your threat area has an additional cost for you to leave a location with the threat tree attached to it. You must spend one action. Uh, at the end of your turn, test agility 2. If you succeed, discard 0 visibility. So, unfortunately, uh, we can't get rid of that easily, but and for now it doesn't affect us. But I think I'll try to get rid of it with an unexpected courage uh, at the end of the round. So, uh, first action, we'll use our special ability to play the pocket telescope from on top of our deck, which is cheaper. And another Jeremiah Kirby, which we don't want to play. So, I will look at the... Well, we'll just head to the precious ice sheet. So, second action, we'll move. So, it's uh, four stra location with one clue and shelter two. Uh, when you draw a hazard treachery while at precious ice sheet, add one uh, frost token to the chaos bag, cancel that card's effect and discard it brutally once per round. So there's one clue here, we need to grab that clue and now we have to put some locations into play. So uh, the only location connected to here is icy wastes and we'll put that over here. And uh, if I remember correctly, that is a bit higher strout, but we'll check. I'll use uh, the free action on pocket telescope, uh, telescope to check. So it's a two shroud location with two clues. Uh, treat the modifier of the first cross token revealed during each skill test at icy waste as minus three instead of minus one. And it's a shelter, shelter four, so it's a better location than this one. And we don't reveal it, we just look at the, it. Okay, and uh, I think last action, we will just investigate here. So uh, we have uh, seven intellect for investigating. So seven versus four, so minus three is okay. Uh, I don't want to commit anything to this test. So minus three. We are successful at investigating, so we grab this clue. Then uh, that is our uh, turn. At the end of our turn, we test agility two, so one, and I'll boost it by two. Let's see if we don't have another card to boost it with. I think we won't use anything else. So we are testing uh, three versus. Uh, Three versus, yeah, it's a test of two. So let's see how that goes. It's an elder sign, and we won't change the card on top of our deck because it's a uh, plus four. So elder sign is good enough. We get rid of this treachery. Then we go to upkeep. Uh, no enemy, so upkeep. Uh, we ready for a card, and we gain one resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. And I'll ready that also. We start by adding a doom. Encounter card for this turn is uh, Dark Aurora. Test willpower 3 for each frost token reel during this test. Take one horror. If you fail, take two horror. So I am not committing anything to this test. I don't have any willpower icons. So we are testing uh, 4 versus. It is a minus one, so we are successful, so nothing happens. Uh, first action, uh, we will move, or do we want to play anything? I think we're good now. So uh, we will move to Icy Wastes, which is a two 
crowd location with two clues and a shelter four. So first off, we add some locations. So we have the icebreaker landing that spawns over here. Then we have uh, uh, remnants of lake camp, and we have the barrier camp. So I think those are, yeah, we have three locations that are connected to this location. So adding some location connectors. Uh, this is a big map, so hopefully I can keep everything in, in the camera view. Okay. First off, uh, I will check because I don't remember what's in the ice wall. Ice record landing, so I'll use the pocket telescope to check. So, uh, also as an additional cost for you to enter this location, investigators that location must spend two clues as a group. So let's check. It's a shelter five. It's again better. So two shroud, two clues, parlay test, uh, intellect four, to search the trap ship for supplies. If you succeed, either remove one uh, token from the chaos bag, uh, cross token from the chaos bag, or record small radio in the supplies we covered so we might want to go grab that uh, small radio oh yeah uh, we could also test have done the test at crash site to get the supplies but we might backtrack there later for now I'm investigating so we'll just investigate and we are seven versus two so I'm not committing anything. Zero. We get one clue. Then uh, we will investigate again. Minus four. So we are still successful. Grab this clue. And that is our turn. No enemies uh, will go to upkeep. We draw a card. Emergency cash on the top, and we gain one resource. So that is that round, and this ready is. So let's go to the next round. We add a doom, so three or four encounter card is uh, through the eyes. Attached to the nearest location without a copy of through the eyes attached. As an additional cost for you to enter or leave attached location, except by a scanner or your card effect test, agility to if you fail, cancel the effects of the move, take one damage and one horror, and discard through the eyes. So I think we're just testing that and failing it. Or uh, actually, we could ward of protection that. Okay, that, that would slow us down quite a bit, uh, because losing action is not nice. So I'll spend one resource, take one horror. And Ward of Protection that, so it doesn't come into play. And that is that. We'll go to Investigation Phase. Uh, first off, we'll use the Pocket Telescope to check Remnants of Lake Camp. So, Remnants of Lake Camp is a 3 shroud location with 3 clues. Test Strength 4 or Fight 4 to dig through the snow in search of supplies. If you succeed in the supplies record, uh, Supplies recovered section of the camp log record wooden sledge max one per campaign. Okay, so this is a shelter seven, so we might want to go there uh, at some point. We'll see. And uh, I think uh, that is yeah. We just checked. So first action will move to here. Icebreaker landing. And we have to spend two clues to go there. Just checking. Yeah, I forgot this. So as an additional cost for you to enter this location, we have to spend one clue. So I can do that now. Okay. So uh, we'll have two clues here. So we'll just start investigating. So second action. We'll investigate. 
I mean investigating again. Seven versus two. It's a minus two, so we grab one clue. And uh, I think last action I'll do the intellect check here. So four against seven, so I'll commit uh, Jeremiah, so eight against four. We're up by, up by four, so this should be easy, easy one. So minus one, we managed to get the small radio from here, so I'll mark it like this. And that is our turn. No enemies uh, will go to upkeep. We draw a card. Top card is uh, deduction. And we gain one resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Uh, we add a doom, so we advance. So I'll just do this. So we advance. Uh, spawn a set aside skittering nonsense at the lead investigator's location. Shuffle the remainder of the set aside skittering nonsense enemies at the set aside creatures in the ice encounter set in the encounter deck. So uh, we get one skittering nonsense that is, uh, spawns on us. I think we'll shrivel that and be done with it. Then. Uh, we shuffle all of this into the counter deck. And I uh, actually forgot to check what was I supposed to put. Uh, uh, not the discard, so that is fine. So we still have that same four stability here. And now we have a threshold of seven. So we'll shuffle those uh, treacheries and enemies into the encounter deck. So if you're wondering, uh, this scenario starts with, uh, I think, zero enemies in the encounter deck. But now we have one on our engage in on us and a lot of enemies in the encounter deck. So this will start to get hairy quite soon. Okay, then we still need to reveal an encounter card, so uh, we get Ancient Evils, and I'll just add the Doom. So uh, we are at one of seven Doom. Okay, well, uh, we have this uh, skittering nonsense on us. It, uh, it's a two fight, two health, and four evade hunter, monster, Eidolon. Uh, forced, when you defeat Skittering Nonsense, shuffle the top card of the Tech Lady deck into your deck without looking at it. If you cannot, Skittering Nonsense attacks you. I'm okay with that, so... Mm, let's mark that it's on us. Uh, first action, we will shrivel. So we are fighting uh, 4 versus 2. Zero, we don't take a horror, and we deal two damage, so this is defeated. And we have to shuffle one, take a little card into our deck. So, just a moment, I'll do that. And the top card. <laughs> it is the Harpbringer. So, uh, let's see. So, the Harpbringer, Omen, End Times Revelation, place this card on top of your deck. Uh, while the Harpbringer is revealed and on top of your deck, cards in your deck cannot be searched, drawn, or manipulated in any way except by the below ability. Double action, discard Harpbringer. This ability may be activated while the Harpbringer is on top of your deck, as if they are in your threat area. So, uh, I think this turn will be just to get rid of the Harpbringer, so we'll discard to get rid of it. And heavy furs in, on top. So, that is all we can do this round. We don't have a location we could reveal with the uh, 
pocket telescoped. So, yeah, let's uh, go to the end of the round. Uh, we draw a card, unexpected courage on top, and we gain one wisdom. So, that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom, two of seven encounter card. So, this turn is another ancient evil, so clock is ticking really fast. But at least we didn't get a new enemy. So this round we will definitely just uh, investigate. Actually, let's move over here. Or actually, no. Let's investigate. So 7 versus 2. Minus 1. We get this clue. And we'll move over here. We check. Using the pocket telescope, the barrier camp. It's a uh, four shroud, three clues, shelter seven. So uh, I think it's the same as this one. So there's a parlay uh, test. Um, willpower four to convince some of the other explorers have give you something useful. If you succeed in the supplies recovered section, can allow record dynamite. So I think we want to head there right away because this was a strength check so we probably won't get that uh, yeah so I'm just figuring out do I want to play heavy first for example before I go there so I will actually just move so we'll go here and we have to Oh yeah, we need to spend four clues, so we can't actually go here yet. Where have all my clues gone? So I need to go figure out something else. Uh, and this is the same, so we just will move over here. And go do this, and go here, and maybe go there from this side. But that is our round, no enemies, I will go to upkeep, we draw unexpected courage and reveal a new card, overpower, okay. Then we gain a resource, that is that round, let's go to the next round, oh yeah, let's ready that. Now we are at 4 of 7 doom, encounter card is, uh, white out. Revelation attached to your location. Each investigator at that attached location gets minus one to each skill. Uh, at the end of the round, discard wide out, so I'll just place it over here. First action will move here. Second action will do the intellect uh, tree test. So we are uh, six versus three, so I'm not boosting it. I'm just counting in one, two, three, four, five, six, eight cards in hand. Maybe I have something to commit. I'll commit the pocket telescope, so we are uh, 7 versus 3. It's a cultist, so minus 2 if you fail. Shuffle the top card of the check a lily deck into your deck without looking, but we succeed. So uh, we mark that we have the supply stuff over from over here. and. Before we move, we'll check what's over here. Uh, so, two, shroud one, clue, shelter one, force. As you reveal one or more frost tokens during a skill test at the treacherous path, take one damage and horror for each frost token. So, that's okay. We'll move there as our last action. So, then we have to put new locations into play. We have the rocky cracks, and that's it. So, rocky cracks, you need one to enter, which we will get. And uh, that is it. So, uh, we'll go to, well, at the end of the round, this, this card should be ready. We draw a card, and we gain one source. And the top card is deduction again. 
So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. Five of seven. Count the card is. Uh, a pair of Hovia. Uh, test uh, willpower X, where X is your location shelter value. If you fail, you must decide to choose one take one or for each point you fail by place two of your clues on invitation or add one force token to the back. Uh, shelter one, so we are testing four versus one, so I'm liking my chances of this test. It's a plus one, so we pass by a long shot. That happens. First action, uh, or before that. Let's uh, again, I forgot to ready this, so I'm using it to check rocky cracks. So, uh, force when a treachery is attached to rocky cracks, the treachery gains surge. And, uh, uh, it's a shroud of free two clues, so we get the remaining clues we need to enter the barrier camp and a shelter tree. So won't be staying here, so definitely go in there next round. So first action we'll investigate over here. I'm investigating 7 versus 2. It's a skull, and skull is x, x is half the shelter value, so uh, round it up, so it's a minus 1, so we still succeed. Then we'll move, we have to spend 1. Rocky cracks, we add the clues over here. And um, last action. So, investigate move, and we have one more action, but first we'll have to move more location. So, we get the uh, frigid cave. We have to spend two clues to go there. And then we get the crystalline cavern. And I think that is everything we do. Last action, we'll just investigate. And uh, I'm actually doing a sneaky thing with uh, uh, Written in the Stars. So I'm playing with uh, Written in the Stars. One resource, so fast. Uh, play do only during your turn. Discard the top card of your deck. If that card is weak, you shuffle it back into your deck. Otherwise, for the remainder of your turn, while the card is in your discard pile, commit it to each eligible skill test you perform. And we have a deduction there, so we'll play that. This goes into our discard. Then uh, we will investigate, and I'm committing deduction to the test. Uh, we are investigating 8 versus 3. And if we succeed, we get two clues. And it's an Elder Sign, so uh, I will actually do this. So we'll put uh, Professor William Webb on top of our deck, so it's a plus three. We get scrying into our hand. Then uh, we succeed, we grab two clues. And that is it. Uh, no enemy actions will go to upkeep. We draw the professor. We reveal a card. It's another overpower. And we gain one resource. So next turn we'll head to the barrier camp and we might want to consider resigning or just maybe go check out the bridge cave. We still won't want to resign. But uh, we'll see. Oh, yeah, we have one location connection missing. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add another doom, so 6 of 7 encounter card is uh, Kindred Mist Revelation attached to the nearest location without copy of Kindred Mist attached. When one or more cards from the Tekka Lily deck would be shuffled into your deck while you are at that attached location, draw them instead, placing them on the bottom of your deck instead of the, of the bottom of the Tekka Lily deck. Discard Kindred Mist at the end of this round. So we are definitely just leaving this location. So before we do anything else, uh, just to double check so I won't have to backtrack here, I'll ch check what's in the Frigid Cave. 
So add one uh, frost token to the case back in the supplies recorded section, campaign log record, my mineral specimen, shelter six and two clues. So I think we'll actually go here first. So we get the clues back and we can get another supply. So, uh, let's see, do we want to play anything this round? I think not. We're happy with this. We could play scrying. Start to scrying stuff. Well, first action, we'll move here. To get away from that. We have to spend two clues, so I'll just put them over here. Uh, I will actually play the scrying. So we want to avoid all the tekeli cars. And weaknesses now. So just to be sure, uh, I'll check the top three cards of my deck. And it's another shriveling uh, professor with a weapon over power. I think we will change their order like so, but now we know there is no weakness coming right, right away. And that is it, so that was our last action. This goes away at the end of the round. Uh, no enemies, we go to upkeep, we draw shriveling, we reveal Professor William Webb. And game on the source. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Oh yeah, and this again ready. So we add a doom, so we advance. And if I remember correctly, this should be the last act uh, agenda. Yeah. Or or the next one is the last. So uh I want to set aside zero of the star's enemy at the reveal location with the highest shelter value. Okay. So we get a terror of the stars. It's a four fight, a three health, and uh, our six health enemy with three evade hunter massive terror of the stars. Uh, while terror of the stars is ready and invested, there's cannot resign at its location or discover clues at the location so uh, and it's massive so we'll just place it over here so it's in the frigid cave which is a really hard place for it to be so the same uh, post ability stays and we have a threshold of seven okay well I think we have to evade it and uh, get clues then evade it and run away but we'll see because we still get an encounter card Dark Aurora test. Uh, willpower 3 for each. Frost token revealed during this test. Take one horror. If you fail, take two horror. Do we have anything to commit? Uh, we have unexpected courage, but I think I will say that we still can take a lot of horror. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Well, we actually will. We'll use the unexpected courage. We have too many cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards left. And also, as a fast action, I will play uh, Mind Over Matter. So now we can evade with a base skill of seven. But first, uh, we'll test this uh, six versus three. It's an auto fail. Uh, we take two horror. That's not that bad. We still have five left. And uh, then uh, we have. I'll put this here as a reminder. We will first evade uh, six versus three. And I'm committing this to the test. So se seven versus three. It's a tablet, uh, we don't fail, it's a minus three, so we succeed to evade this. Second action, we will investigate. I think we don't have 
mind us anymore. So investigating. Uh, seven versus four. And uh, I don't want to commit anything. It's a minus one because it's a frost token. We're reading it another one. We are still succeeding. So it's a minus two. So we still succeed and get, grab one clue. Last action we'll investigate again. Seven versus uh, six. Ver uh, sorry, five, six, seven versus four. It's a zero. We'll grab the last clue. So now we have enough clues to enter the barrier camp. But that is our round. No enemy actions. Uh, we ready up cards. So this engages us again. And we draw a card. Flip this card. We know that it's over power. And we gain one resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. So one of seven. Count card for this turn is uh, Polar Vortex Revelation. Attach your location force when you your, you end your turn at that location. Each card you control with health, including your investigator, takes one direct damage. At the end of the round, discard Polar Vortex. So we want to get away from there uh, this round. So first action, we will uh, extra exhaust uh, Elijah and uh, use a token from there to evade and you are evading uh, five versus three yeah so we need a minus two or better so uh, skulls are bad uh, tablets are bad uh, there are a lot of bad tokens here, but we drew up plus one, so we evade. Luckily. Then, uh, second action. We will add one frost token to the bag. So we have also got the mineral specimen from here. So we have two frost tokens in the bag. And uh, as a reminder, if we draw two frost tokens, uh, side, side by side or after each other, uh, that is an auto fail. So now we have a second possibility of an auto fail in the back, which is not nice. The last action will just move and be this location. Then, uh, just to double check, well, uh, I'll actually check what's here. Crystalline Cavern, so we need four clues to enter here. Uh, it's a test to Agility 5 to climb up onto the crystalline walls in search of evidence if you succeed in the supplies recorded section of the Campbell Lock record Miasmic Crystal and it's a shelter 8 so it would be the best uh, shelter location but I think I'll go after the supplies more so I'll go to the barrier camp and take the uh, shelter 7 next round but uh, that is everything we ready up goes away. Uh, we'll draw a card and uh, we get got so luckily I wasn't scrying so I was a bit hesitant to reveal that card but that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom and found the card for this round is a manifestation of madness. So it's 3 fight, 3 health and 3 evade hunter. When a manifestation of madness attacks you, shuffle up 2 cards of the deck and deck into your deck without looking at them. For each card you cannot shuffle, manifestation of madness deals plus 1 damage and plus 1 horror for this attack. So that uh, spawns on us and that is not very nice. We really need to evade it. We don't have time to kill it I think so. Mm. I'm just going to use Elijah again to aid. We are evading a 5 versus two, uh, a 3, so a 0 is enough. We evade it. 
just move it over to here. And uh, first, uh, second action, we'll move to the barrier camp. So, as we already know, it's a four sharp location with three clues. A parlay test uh, willpower four to convince some of the other explorers here to give you something useful if you see it in the supplies recovered section of the campaign log record dynamite so we really want that dynamite and luckily we are getting the guts so last action and we have to spend four clues to enter here so last action uh, we really need to Investigate. So next turn we will investigate, investigate, call a, then that enemy moves to us, attacks us, well that's okay, we won't die to it, then we will resign the turn after, so I think we are good. So, uh, last action, investigate, we don't have anything to commit, well we have the professor, so it's four shroud. I'm going 8 versus 8 versus 4, so up by 4. It's a frost token, so we're up by 3. And uh, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, up by 3. Minus 2, so we succeed. We grab this blue from here. And uh, that is everything. This enemy hunts over here. This ready is. He's ready. We draw the guts. We reveal mind over matter. We only gain one resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Okay, and we add a doom to the agenda. So, I just uh, remembered the Terror of the Stars will also hit us, so we are going to get a lot of punishment next round, but I think we can just barely manage that, but we'll see. So, uh, we add Doom, 4 of 7, Encounter Cardis, High Shaft, Test, Agility 4, uh, for each Frost Token reveal during this test, take 1 damage, if you fail, take 2 damage. Okay, well, I think uh, Jeremiah will bite the bullet and those enemies engage me and attack, so uh, we will just test this. We don't have anything to boost it with, so we are testing uh, three, 1 versus 3. It's a minus 2. So we take 2 damage. And that is it. First action we will investigate. And uh, yeah, I will commit that. Uh, I, I won't commit anything, I mean. So uh, we are investigating uh, 7 versus 4. It is a minus 2. We grab one clue. We'll investigate again 7 versus 4. Zero. Last action, we'll try the parlay action here. So I will commit guts. So we are six versus four. So we need a minus two or better to succeed. It is a cultist, so it's a minus two. So we get to mark also this that, uh, to the campaign log. So we have recovered uh, the small radio, uh, the what's here supplies, then uh, the mineral specimen and also dynamite. So I think that's pretty good. And also we draw a card with the guts and we reveal a knife. That is everything. These enemies move here and attack us. So these are engaged. So first off, we'll take two damage from and one horror from uh, Terror of the Stars. 
So Jeremiah will die, we'll take one horror here. Then uh, the manifestation attacks me, so I shuffle two, take a little cars, deck. There are a lot of weaknesses and I don't have that big of a deck left, so hopefully we don't get that chain reaction and die to some horrors or anything like that, but we'll see. And uh, it deals us one damage and one horror, so I can still take. That is it. No other enemy action. It will go to upkeep. Oh yeah, this. Okay, so we draw the Libra the Adon, uh, which we don't have time to use. And the top card is written in the stars. And just a reminder, we cannot resign while this is uh, ready. So we definitely need to create, create it first. But we'll see how that goes. But that is that round. Uh, we can also open this source. Uh, let's go to the next round. We add a Doom. Encounter card is... Uh, Glacian Phantasm. Uh, monster Eidolon 4 fight, 4 herald 2. Evade forced at the end of the enemy phase. If Glacial Phantasm is ready. Move it once towards the location with the most investigators. In player order, each investigator at Glacial Phantasm location or a connecting location shuffles the top card of the Jekyllily deck, uh, deck into their deck without looking. And each who cannot takes one horror. So I think we will have to evade uh, the Terror of the Stars, then just sign. And to do that, I will actually I will play Mind Over Matter. Then first action, I will uh, yeah. Before that, I played the Mind Over Matter, so now I have an agility of uh, five. So I'll commit this to go agility six. So we are three up. Plus one, this is evaded. Second action, uh, we will resign. Okay, well, that went pretty, pretty well. So, uh, just to check, so we got, uh, so we get the resolution one under the stars. So, let's look at that first. First off, uh, Choose allocation in play with no clues on it. If your camp in your campaign log, write camp. And next to it, record the location's name. This location is referred to as the investigator's camp, so we'll decide it's the barrier camp. Yeah. Then, each investigator earns experience equal to the camp's shelter value to a minimum of 3 plus the victory x value of each card in the victory display. Uh, so we gain 7 experience from the location because it's a shelter 7. That is it. Uh, we got 4 markings to supplies we have uh, recovered. Also, uh, if we check the intel uh, checkpoint then uh, we know that we only have to shuffle one of these uh, eight remaining um, partners that has been captured in the next scenario, so that is really good. But yeah, overall I think this scenario went pretty pretty well. So as you can see, you can play this uh, campaign with a limited card pool. The box has a lot of upgrade cards in it, so uh, when you are getting experience and with Norman you are upgrading to mystic cards, so uh, I think there are a lot of good cards you can upgrade to with Norman to play the whole campaign in it. So, I uh, hope you guys liked this playthrough and got a good view of a limited card to play experience uh, with the uh, Edge of the Earth investigators and the expansion. So thanks for watching and until next time.